Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Global Rewilding News where we bring you uplifting, practical and hopeful stories from rewilders all around the world. Thank you for joining us today and for being part of the beautiful, hopeful Global Rewilding movement. I'm Alistair from the Global Rewilding Alliance. Let's get to it. Starting off with our new members of the week, we warmly welcome Ferncliffs Forest Wilding to the Alliance. Based in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa, their team is rewilding a beautiful area on the outskirts of the city of Peter Maritzburg. They're rewilding an, an area of misbelt forest which is a rare and very rich habitat. With a high rainfall in a largely dry country, this is a magical tangle of a vegetation at the edge of the city that harbours unexpected, often secretive creatures that dwell in and depend on the profusion of indigenous plants that grow here. But a tide of alien species is threatening the ecosystem's survival. Through our alliance, they are already connected with another new member, Operation Songamanzi Youth Movement, who are university students involved in water conservation, river restoration and rewilding and who are going to come and help them to get rid of the invasive species. We also welcome this week the Adam Foundation, another youth movement that is working with communities in Cameroon to restore forests and other ecosystems to the benefit of local people. Hi, I'm May, and I'm here to bring you some more wonderful rewilding success stories. First up, we have the herd of ancient Taurus cattle that have been rewilded in Spain and are already preventing wildfire, bringing back biodiversity and healthy soils. This magnificent species is part of the wider Europe-based tourist program that is working to bring back this keystone species in the hope of replicating the central role of the extinct auroch. These wild cattle share 94% of their genetics with the auroch, so are large, powerful and very resilient. They trample and graze the landscape and as ecosystem engineers are already having a visible positive impact. Here are three of them. Firstly, their high resilience to parasites means that there's no need for medication, resulting in chemical-free, nutrient-rich dung that is promoting soil health. This links to the second positive impact, where the rewilders who are researching the herd have noticed that other species in the area, such as the Iberian ibex, have been lingering close to the herd as the soils are healthier, vegetation more plentiful and easier to access. Lastly, and even more remarkably, a local farmer reported a large lightning strike recently to uh, a big tree that usually would have started a devastating wildfire, but instead, as the ground had been trampled and grazed by the herd, no fire was started and the landscape remained resilient. Wonderful, so I'm Alienor and here's another rewilding success story for you. Uh, wildlife is bouncing back in um, Caribbean islands after invasive mites were removed. So the island of Sombrero in the Caribbean, which is part of Anguilla, um, has seen a huge resurgence of wildlife in recent months after European mice and invasive species were removed from the island. The seabirds that used to nest there um, were not adapted to the mice and when they took over the island, they started uh, eating their eggs and killing local reptiles and basically damaging local bi biodiversity. So now that the mice have been removed, uh, species of native birds have, starting to, have started to return uh, and reptiles are now thriving and breeding as well uh, in large numbers. In two years, the numbers of ground lizards have gone up from just 100 animals to over 900 uh, now. Caribbean islands as a collective are wildlife hotspots which rank in the top three globally even though they only uh, accumulate one percent of the global landmass. This is part of a program which was run by Fauna and Flora International and by GRA member Redot Wild. Next up, NASA become beaver believers. Populations of beavers are being brought back to Idaho and Utah in America where rewilders are now teamed up with NASA to monitor and measure their impact on local ecosystems with the new beaver re restoration assessment tool. Having been hunted for decades, populations dwindled and were entirely wiped out of certain areas. It's believed that up to 400 million beavers were hunted by Europeans as they moved east to west across America. 
Now, rewilders are bringing back the species and in doing so, building drought resiliency. And with the help of NASA, we can see their impacts on rivers, streams and other watersheds. When beavers were reintroduced, they dam riverways, meaning that water lingers in the environment for longer throughout the seasons, enriching bird, plant, insect and amphibian life all along the water. It also replenishes aquifers and keeps the soil, grass and trees wetter for longer. NASA's Earth Observatory are already revealing images that show a vast beige, beige landscape with dense green pockets in the areas of the reintroduced beavers. One of the scientists involved says that the real value of using satellite data for monitoring is the support to the people on the ground working hard to increase water availability, fish populations and species habitat. He says, the more support we can give them, the more broadly these practices can pr proliferate. NASA have made a great short film. See the show notes for the link. Next up, a rare migratory bird called the corncake has started to recover from near extinction thanks to uh, British rewilders. These ground nesting birds get their Latin name Crex Crex from the mating sound that the males make to attract females during the nesting season. Um, so they sing all night long and actually used to keep Alistair awake at night uh, because they used to breed near his house in uh, Western Ireland uh, growing up. And unfortunately the introduction of silage has led populations to crash as young birds were not able to get away from the machines quickly enough. And now working in partnership with local communities and farmers, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds has seen the number of uh, breeding pairs starting to recover, which is mostly the case in uh, remote Scottish islands. Um, nevertheless, this is a good start and it brings the hope that young birds will spread out again and start to reoccupy the territory that they used to live in. Next up, the indigenous government has recognised community claims to ancestral forest rights in a Sumatran province in Indonesia for the first time in history covering an area that, uh, that's over 22,500 hectares. These forests are managed by eight traditional communities, locally known as Mukim. This recognition will give their local communities legal protection to manage their forests in a more sustainable way. Although this is a grand feat, the area agreed area covers only 15% of the forests proposed by the communities. So this is just the beginning of the Mukim's hopes to gain ancestral forest rights. A step in the right direction, some of the chiefs say the legal recognition could work to embolden the indigenous people's work to manage these dense biodiverse forests sustainably. Science has demonstrated that forests and other biomes are healthier when local communities are in charge, even though their customary rights aren't always recognised. So one hope is that indigenous and local communities could participate in carbon tra the tra carbon trading market by conserving their forests and gaining income from carbon trading. However, work must be made to directly include these communities into the market with positive action towards making these tools accessible such as training and education. Lastly, here's a quotation of the week. What you do makes a difference and you have to decide what type of difference you want to make. Jane Goodall. In other more local news, just by coincidence, on the filming of our first Global Rewilding News episode, a white-tailed eagle was seen flying over my village in the southeast of England, having been reintroduced to the Isle of Wight, which is 70 miles away, uh, three years ago. Uh, so it's lovely and hopeful, a nice sign for the, the coming episodes. <laughs> The white-tailed eagle with a huge wingspan of over three metres, that's like a, a barn door, uh, a fish hunting species um, that were hunted to extinction in England. So it's good to see them back. So that's all for now, folks. Thank you very much for joining us on Global Rewilding News and for helping us to build the beautiful global rewilding movement. If you like the content, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to receive notifications. See you next time for more uplifting global rewilding news.